Our objective this morning is threefold. First, to understand the concept of pressure. Second, we are understanding the concept of pressure. Second, we are understanding the product of pressure. What pressure will produce. And third, we are understanding what to do in the midst of pressure. Understanding the concept of pressure. Understanding the product or the outcome of pressure. And understanding what to do in the midst of pressure. What is pressure? By definition, pressure is defined to be the continuous physical force exerted on or against an object. Continuous physical force exerted on or against an object. That there, there is a force exerted on or against an object by something in contact with it. That is the force of the pandemic, for example, that we are facing now. Continuous physical force exerted on or against an object by something in contact with it. Second, pressure is also defined as a sense of stressful urgency. It's a sense of stressful urgency caused by having too many demands on one's time or resources. A sense of stressful urgency caused by having too many demands on one's time or resources. That suggests that times of pressure, times of pressure are times of stress. There are times of some level of urgencies. Certain things appear urgent. There are times that places demands on a lot of things, demands on time, demands on resources. When you look at it another way, pressure times are times of stress, times of crushing. These are synonyms. Times of weight. Burden. Tension. Stress. Crushing. Weight. Burden. Tension. Question is, is there profit at, at times like this? Yes. You know that it is pressure on the olive that produces the olive oil. You know that it is pressure on the charcoal that produces the diamond. Years and generation of pressure on the charcoal produces the diamond. You know that the butterfly came out of the caterpillar by pressure. Pressure. You know it is the crushing of the rose. The rose flower. That produces the fragrance. So there is profit in pressure. Joseph. Was a product of pressure. Pressure from his brethren. The pressure of envy and jealousy. Pressure in the pit. Pressure in Potiphar's house. Pressure by having to go through a prison due to false allegations. But he came out of that pressure and became somebody. Esther was a product of pressure. Young girl lost her father, became a slave in a strange land. Out of that pressure. She became the queen of the most powerful empire that ever existed. 
Daniel was a product of pressure. Young man, eunuch, also a slave in a foreign land with a lot of people who hated his profile out of that pressure. He became one of the most important persons ever to exist in the whole of scripture. So there is profit in pressure. So we are in a pressure time now globally. <laughs> Unbelievable time. I mean, since you were born, you will never imagine that a day will come where there is no, no service on a Sunday morning. You wouldn't believe that. What is possible out of this kind of pressure? Number one, what are the specific benefits, dividends, products, or outcome of pressure? One, oil is produced out of pressure. Oil is produced out of pressure. The anointing, the power of God is produced and released in times of pressure. In Judges chapter 14 verse 5 all the way to verse 6 then Samson went down and his father and his mother to Timnath and came to the vineyards of Timnath. And behold, a young lion pressurized him. Roared against him. You remember pressure is the force that comes against. Pressurized him. Came against him. And the Bible said, And the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. And he rent him as he would have rent a kid. And he had nothing in his hand. But he told not his father, or his mother what he had done a young lion roared against him a young lion roared against him a force came against him put his life under pressure and in that instant the anointing arose the power arose the mantle arose something came upon him out of that pressure do you remember that just david was a young man that had a lot of pressure. He was the one who said in Psalm 27 and in verse 10. That when his, mo his, his father and his mother forsook him. The Lord will take him up. So he was a, a young man who battled with rejection in his, in his father's house. So much so that when it was time for somebody to be anointed king. Nobody remembered him. Nobody looked for him. Beyond that, he was facing the pressure of lions and bears. While tending his father's flock, a lion would come. According to what he recited in 1 Samuel chapter 17. And in verse 34 all the way to verse 37. He was under such a pressure. And in 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 13. The anointing located him. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. That was David. Those who will take advantage of this season of the roaring of the corona will see an oil and an anointing they haven't seen before. We are in a season where there is a virus called coronavirus that is roaring around the earth. Those who will take advantage of this season of the roaring of the coronavirus will see an oil and an anointing like never before. What happens in times of pressure? First, oil is produced out of of pressure. You know we said earlier on that the olive oil came out of pressure from the olive. The palm oil came out of pressure from the palm. The granite oil came out of pressure from the groundnut. Coconut oil came out of pressure on the coconut. What happens in time of pressure? Number two, life is transformed 
and refined by pressure. Transformed and refined by pressure. Remember what pressure did to the charcoal. Brittle, soft, easily breakable charcoal got transformed by millenniums of pressure to become the hard, unbreakable diamond. Beautiful and the most precious material on the face of the earth. Remember what pressure did to the caterpillar. Transformed it to beautiful butterfly. See what pressure did to Joseph. Joseph became the lovest. Pardon the use of that word. The lovest. The meekest. The humblest man you ever saw. Life is transformed. And reformed refined by pressure. Job said when he has tried me, I will come forth as gold. When I have passed through so much pressure, the outcome of my life will be like gold. I see somebody in this season coming out like gold in the name of Jesus coming forth as gold Job chapter 23 verse 10 but he knoweth the way that I take when he has tried me when I have been pressed on every side when I have passed through several things I shall come forth as gold. The meaning of that is pressure has the capacity to enhance value. The value of your life can be upgraded by passage through times of pressure, especially when these times are understood and maximized. Pressure has the way of enhancing value, allocating worth, upgrading destiny. So life is transformed and refined by pressure. Number three, birth happens. Birth happens by pressure. Women give birth by pressure. The contractions, continuous sustained contractions of the uterus continuous, sustained, strong, powerful contractions of the, of the uterus combined with the maximum force of pressure, the push when the cervix is fully dilated 10 over 10 and the woman is as push that pressure brings forth the birth no wonder the Bible said in Isaiah chapter 66 and in verse 8 it says who has heard such thing who has seen such thing shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day or shall a nation be born at once. For as soon as Zion travelled, she brought forth her children. As soon as Zion travelled, she brought forth her children. Hallelujah. The nation of Israel was literally born in a day in the midst of the pressure. Pressure, pressure. Jacob became Israel according to Genesis 32 verse 24 to 28 in the midst of pressure as he was left alone and put 
pressure and wrestle. What does that mean to you? Something is born. Something can be born in the season of pressure. <laughs> New potentials can come forth out of the midst of pressure. Visions can be birthed through pressure. David was a man who developed multiple abilities. He deployed multiple potentials because he was a man in the midst of serious, consistent pressure. Pressure in the family, pressure from Saul, pressure from Goliath, pressure from everywhere. I'm sure that most of his songs came in the midst of those pressures. Why are that cast down, oh my soul? Do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? It means he was passing through some life-threatening experiences. Pressure gives birth to potentials. Pressure gives birth to vision. And I prophesy to somebody, in this season, something massive shall be born out of your life. Something massive shall be born out of your system, out of your spirit, in the name of Jesus. Number four, this is very important. But what have I said so far? Oil is produced out of pressure. Life is transformed and refined by pressure. Birth happens by pressure. Number four, content is revealed by pressure. And when it is revealed, it can be addressed. So, but content is revealed by pressure. Adversity reveals content far more than prosperity. <laughs> you know when you dip sponge inside water or inside oil and you press it, what is inside comes out. You don't know who anybody is in seasons of prosperity. You don't know who anybody is when times are favorable. You don't know even who you are when things are normal. The stuff you are made of is revealed by pressure. <laughs> it is when you press foam soaked in water or oil that what is inside comes out. You don't know who you are. And you don't know what you really believe. <laughs> until you are pressed by things. That is where, where your belief is exposed. At the center of you, what you really stand for is exposed. You know, Peter said to Jesus, when Jesus said in Matthew chapter 26, verse 31 to 35, we can read that. Matthew 26, says, and then said Jesus unto them, all of you shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. Jesus said unto him, Don't be in a hurry to talk like that. Verily I say unto you that this night, not tomorrow, not next year, this night, before the cock crow, you will deny me three times. Said, what? Peter said unto him, Even though I should die with you, yet will I not deny you? Likewise also said all the disciples. Now it has not finished. If you now move on to verse 69, you will see the same chapter, just, just a little. Now, now, now Peter sat without in a, a palace 
in the palace. And a damsel came unto him saying, Thou also was with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied before them all saying, I know not what thou sayest. And when he was gone out into the porch, another maid saw him and said unto them that were there, This fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. And again he denied with an oath, I do not know the man. And after a while came unto him they that stood by and said to Peter, Surely thou also art one of them, for thy speech be be bereared thee. Then he began to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man. And immediately the cock crew. And Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out and wept bitterly. That's right. When there was no pressure, I would die with you. I would do everything. Oh, I would go everywhere. When pressure arose and content was revealed, Peter was shocked at what he saw. Beloved, this is the season where you will know the level of faith or fear you have. This is the season where you will know the level of audacity or whatever else you have. But don't condemn yourself because you were disappointed in what you saw in yourself. That was the benefit of the pressure. To re really reveal to you who you are. To really reveal to you what you believe. To really reveal to you what you stand for. Then you can make adjustments. Then you can address your life. Then you, okay, so I am, I am more fearful than I thought. Okay, so I'm not as audacious as I, felt, I thought. Okay, so I'm not... And as this or that. Okay, so I'm not as believing as I thought. Now, then it makes you to walk on your content. Content is revealed so that it can be addressed by pressure. Hallelujah. Number five, character is refined by pressure. It's refined. Character is refined. You know, the prodigal son was practically characterless. Got money, squandered it on riotous living according to scripture until the famine arose and he began to be in want. Then two things happened to him. One, his mentality got corrected. And his character got adjusted. If mentality was corrected. And then character adjusted. He came and said. How many hired servants? In Luke chapter 15 verse 17. When he came to himself. He said. How many hired servants of my fathers. Have bread enough to spare. And I perish with hunger. I will arise. And go to my father. And I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. And I am no more worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. You see? Mentality corrected. Character adjusted. Humility imparted. <laughs> see, I am no more worthy to be a son. Don't even call me your son. Let me become a servant. When there was plenty money, there was, he, he, he couldn't come to that level. My prayer is that if there is anything that this season will achieve on us, let it be achieved. So, trust God that even though the devil may have planned another plan for this season, that you will come out with oil out of this season and you trust God for a transformed, a refined and an upgraded life enhanced in value. You trust God to bet something that some things inside you will come out in this season of pressure. You will trust God that as your content, the real you is revealed, you can address it and adjust it and trust God 
for any area of character adjustment that need to be adjusted. Now, what do you do in times of pressure? Number one, pressure times are prayer times. The time of pressure is the time of prayer. Jacob prayed. He was facing the fear of Esau. Genesis 32, 24 to 28. If you read earlier on, I think around verse 12 or 13, he was talking to God. He said, my brother Esau is coming and I fear him. I fear him. I fear him. The way the fear of coronavirus and the fear of infection, and I can tell you the fear of it is worse than the, 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 the disease itself. The record shows that 90% of all those infected, over 90% recover. Right? But the fear of it is heavier than the disease itself. And it is okay like that. In some ways. So that uh, people can also take their caution. But not a mortal fear that will cause it to come. Now. Jacob was under tension. He said I fear he so he's about to come. And that pushed him to very desperate praying. And that desperate praying produced the change in his life. Changed from Jacob to Israel. Daniel chapter 2 in verse 17 all the way to verse 19. We saw Daniel went to his house. Made the thing known to Hananiah, Michelle and Azariah his companions. That they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret. That Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. And there was a secret revealed. Daniel was confronted with the threat of death. Death sentence. Like the fear of death in the air right now. That if, they, if him or any of the wise men will not give the dream of tell Nebuchadnezzar his dream and tell him the interpretation of the dream that they will be executed. And Daniel responded by prayer. Every threat of the enemy is to be given a maximum prayer response. Whenever there is a threat of the enemy, a pressure from the enemy on your life, on your family, on your destiny, the first response is a prayer response. That was what Esther did. In Esther chapter 4 verse 16, when there was a pressure on, on, on the land and pressure on her people, he said, go gather together all the Jews that are present in Sushan and fast ye for me and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise. And so will I go in unto the king which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. And she never perished. This is time to pray abundantly. This is the time to pray the way the scripture says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17. Pray without season. Every time you remember the situation we are in, just break out in prayer. Prayer in the spirit, prayer in your understanding. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18 said, I'm praying always with all prayer. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Hallelujah. Times of pressure are times of prayer. Job was under pressure. But in the midst of the pressure he found himself, he still had time to pray for his friends. In Job chapter 42 verse 10. And God turned the captivity of Job as he prayed for his friend. Pressure times are prayer times. Times of pressure are times of prayer. Good a thing that there is compulsory holiday. And this is not a time to while away watching aimless films or movies. This is not a time to even while away on, on the streets just aimlessly. This is the time to maximize that time you have been given in prayer. Number two, pressure times are 
thinking and planning times. Time to think. Time to plan. That was what the prodigal son did. Luke 15, 17 to 19. He came to himself. Because adversity impacts mentality. It impacts mentality. It impacts mentality. So you settle down. Some people in some places say the whole situation looks like it is the end of the world. The question is, if it was truly the end of the world, what would I have done differently? If the world had ended now, what are my regrets? What would have been my regrets? If Jesus has come now, what would, what, what would I regret? And since the world has not ended and Jesus has not yet come, what would I need to do differently going forward? With the time I have, with the resources I have, what will I do differently? You go ahead and do it. It is thinking time and planning time. If I had another chance to do things right, how will I do it? And thirdly, pressure times are praise times. Paul and Silas were under pressure and they were in the prison in Acts chapter 16 verse 25 all the way to verse 26 and at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaking they were under intense pressure they prayed that was the last thing, the first thing we said, and they praised, and they praised. Jonah chapter 2, verse 9 to 10. We saw Jonah speaking to God. He said, but I will sacrifice unto thee the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. And the Lord spake to the fish and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. As Jonah gave thanks, if you read the whole of Jonah chapter 2, you will see his lamentation in the belly of the fish. But as Jonah gave thanks, as Jonah celebrated God, as Jonah worshipped God, God spoke to the fish, and it vomited Jonah. This is not murmuring time. This is not grumbling time. This is not time to quarrel with God. Lord, where are you? And all these things are happening. <laughs> the devil will make you to do that. This is time to say, Lord, thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for health. Many have died of the virus. Thank you for health. Thank you for sustenance. Thank you that I am alive if for nothing else to make sure that my life is right with you. And thank you because this thing does not have a future. Thank you because you are God. Thank you because you are faithful. And then this, the Lord will speak to the prison of quarantine <laughs> and speak to the whale of Corona. Vomit them. Hallelujah. Prayer response, praise response, planning response. These are appropriate responses to pressure. Somebody say amen. Finally, pressure times are persistence times. Persistence. There are times to persist. There are times to refuse to give up. There are times to refuse to give in. You refuse to give way. You refuse to give out. I refuse to give up. 
I refuse to give in. I refuse to give way. I refuse to give out. Persistence times. Job said in Job chapter 14 verse 14. He said if a man die. Shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time. Will I wait. Till my change come. The time to persist. But the woman does not run out of labor midway. Otherwise the child is not born. The gold does not come out of the fire midway. Otherwise it is not refined. And, and the best does not come out. Stay in the process. Something is about to break. This is not the time to cower. This is not the time to whimper. This is the time for audacity and ruggedity. This is the time to say, you situation, I will see the end of you. You will not see the end of me. Coronavirus, we will see the end of you globally. You cannot see the end of us. For the days of John the Baptist till now, the kingdom suffered violence. And the violent take it by force. I'd like you to look at this scripture. We read it before. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, all the way to verse 10. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body. The dying of the Lord Jesus. That the life also of Jesus might be made manifest. Somebody say a loud amen. The Living Bible version, TLB, of the same scripture, this is how he said it. He said, but we have, he said, but this precious treasure, this light and power that now shine within us is held in perishable container. That is in our weak bodies. Everyone can see that the glorious power within must be from God and is not our own. We are pressed on every side. Somebody say press. Pressed on every side by troubles. But not crushed and broken. We are pressed. There's so much pressure. If somebody is wondering... How about food? How about water? No church service. I need to be in the company of the brethren and rekindle my fire. We are pressed. But not crushed and broken. We are perplexed. Because we don't know why things happen. As they do. Why is this thing happening? But we don't give up and quit. We are perplexed. So we are confused. So we are just wondering. What is happening? Why did it happen? How is it happening? We don't know why things happen as they do. We don't know why Corona should come at a time like this. And for the first time in the history of the world to my notice, almost everything is shut down. Busy industry, business, including spiritual matters. We don't know why things should happen like this. But we don't give up and we can't quit. We are hunted down because they say, don't shake hands. Don't go close to anybody. <laughs> but God never abandons us. We get knocked down. Everybody stay at home, but we get up again and keep going. These bodies of ours are constantly facing death. Threat everywhere, just as Jesus did. Infection. Ah, something in the air. So it is clear to all that is 
it is only the living Christ within who keeps us safe. Only the living Christ within us. Only the living Christ within us. We may do every physical measure. And let us do everything we need to do. Let's do everything we need to do. Wash our hands. Do everything we must do. But only the living Christ within us keeps us safe. And we must return. We must remain in contact with the living Christ. Be conscious of the living Christ. Do you understand? Now go ahead. Wash your hands. Do all the hand washings you do. And, and make sure you do that. Do the hand washings. Do the uh, uh, social distancing. And do everything. But it is only the living Christ. Let me read that verse again. Only these bodies of ours are constantly facing death just as this was did. So it is clear to all that it is only the living Christ within who keeps us safe. That is why no devil can impose on you the affliction. No devil can impose the affliction provided you have done your best and kept yourself safe. The Message Bible, I'll read verse 8 and 9. Message Bible, verse 8 and 9 of 2 Corinthians chapter 4. As it is, there is not much chance of that. You know for yourselves that we are not much to look at. Look at this now. I, I like you. Everywhere you are, across the world, from America, from Asia, I want to talk to them, just, just yes. From America, from Asia, from Africa, from everywhere around the world where there is this threat. See that passage right now. Been surrounded and battered by troubles, but we are not demoralized. We've been surrounded and battered by fears, but we are not demoralized. We are not sure what to do, but we know that God knows what to do. We are not sure of what to do, but we know that God knows what to to do. God knows what to do. We don't know what to do in this season and in this situation, but God knows what to do. We've been spiritually terrorized by a tiny virus, but God hasn't left our side. We've been thrown down we haven't broken. What they did to Jesus, they do to us. Trial and torture, mockery and murder. What Jesus does did among them, he does in us. He lives. Hallelujah. We don't know what to do. But he knows what to do. Beloved, Listen to me this morning. Ensure that in this season you pray, you plan and think, you praise, you persist. Ensure you don't come out of this season the same way and at the same level. Ensure it. When Joseph went through the pit, through Potiphar's house, and went to the prison. When he returned, he didn't return back to that little boy who was looking for his father's, his brethren, and delivering message. When he came out of that process, he came at a higher pedestal, the prime minister of the whole of Egypt. When Job came out of what pressure he passed through. He didn't come out at the same level that the pressure met him. He stepped out on a higher pedestal. Job had twice as much as all. God blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginnings. For he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, 1,000 she asses. He had also 11, 7 sons and 3 daughters. And so on and so forth. Twice. 
God gave Job. Don't come out at the same level. When Daniel went into the lion's den and he came out, he didn't come out to, to, to the realm he was before he entered the lion's den. Daniel prospered in Daniel chapter 6 from verse 26 all the way to verse 28. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. For he is the living God and steadfast forever and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed and his dominion shall be even to the end. It is a new day. Now okay. He delivereth and rescueth and he worketh signs and wonders in heaven and in the earth who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. Whatever you will do ensure that you don't come out at the same level you were before you went inside because of coronavirus. Lift up your hands and give him the praise. Lift up your hands. I'll dare you to stand if you are sitting in front of your television or wherever you are and lift up your hands now and just give him the praise and the honor and the adoration for his goodness and his mercies. Father, we love you. Father, we honor you. Father, we adore you. Father, we magnify you. Father, we worship you. Ancient of days, lily of the valley, rose of Sharon, we worship you. We honor you. We magnify you. Let the sick luma nagarata satalara yada hashta. Le perete siku magadayala hasidish. Le perete skelimana galayata Father, we give you the praise. Father, we give you the honor. Father, we give you the adoration. Father, we give you the worship, the supremacy, dominion, rule, and sovereignty. Blessed be your name. Honor to your name. Adoration to your name. Worship to your name. Thank you. And thank you. And thank you. And thank you. And thank you. Blessed be your name in Jesus' precious name.